Imagine for a moment that you are shopping for a new computer, perhaps in uh, CompUSA or one of the other defunct stores that are sadly no longer around. And uh, sometime in the 90s, maybe even the 80s, uh, how much would you be spending on a new computer, likely with one of the uh, top models of that time? Uh, you know, it's easy to look back on the cost of computers and other electronics and say, well, it doesn't look all that bad, but of course you need to adjust for inflation in order to compare it accurately. So if we do adjust for inflation, if we look at real dollars here in 2019, uh, how much would these really popular uh, home computer systems uh, actually set you back? And I want to start here in 1999, uh, partly because that's a nice whole number here. We're going back 20 years from today. And I also graduated in 1999. So, um, and I, uh, I was going off to college and I was looking for a computer system that was relatively affordable. And what I really wanted was, was actually this, this gateway unit. Um, it was something very similar to this GP6 400. I was looking at about 400 megahertz. Now there were, 500 megahertz systems available in 1999, but those were top of the line uh, and quite expensive. So I was looking at 400 megahertz units. Um, I ended up not going with Gateway because I couldn't afford it. I ended up getting just a no-name brand uh, generic system, but it had very similar specs to this one. And the Gateway computers, I think by the, the late 90s basically were the best-selling computers. The, those and, and the Dells uh, were doing very well. Um, so you get this Pentium 2, 400 megahertz, 64 megabytes of RAM by this time uh, was pretty common. Um, you're starting to see the AGP uh, GPUs get 16 megabytes here, uh, 10 gigabyte hard drive, 17 inch uh, CRT monitor. And, um, you know, when I was putting together a system, I was mainly concerned with how well I'd be able to play Diablo 2. Um, that was the big game of that year for me, and, and well, at least 2000. I think it actually came out in 2000, but I was looking to put together a computer I could actually play that game on, and it turned out that I could play it, but actually not at all the highest settings. But anyway, um, that system would have cost you $1,699 in uh, 1999 dollars, you know. But if you adjust for inflation, uh, it'd be like spending $2,600 uh, today on a computer. And you know you may not be able to buy all the again all the top of the line components, but you could put together a really respectable uh, gaming computer for that for that amount of money. And um, you know the GP6400 was not top of the line, but you could you could almost put together a top of the line a gaming computer. You'd have to make a few concessions here and there, but uh, yeah, twenty six hundred dollars will go quite a ways. And by the way, I was just kind of curious, uh, you know, in terms of the processing power of these late 90s home computer systems, how they might compare with modern uh, processors. And so uh, I was looking at this A11, which is an iPhone 8, and uh, transistor count, uh, which is, a, it's a, you know, it's one of the proxies you can use basically for overall computing power. It's not perfectly linear. Uh, but it is a decent approximation of you know how much uh, pro raw processing power is, is in um, these uh, these computers, and what you'd find is about five to ten million transistors within the CPU of a late '90s uh, desktop computer. Uh, in that A11, you've got 4.3 trillion uh, transistors uh, packed in there somehow. So um, a huge, huge leap forward, uh, much more powerful overall than, than your average desktop computer in the late 90s. No big surprise there, but I, I was actually surprised at just you know, how far we've come actually in terms of uh, the hardware. Being able to, to pack in that many transistors I think is pretty impressive. So let's go back a year to the, the glorious uh, 1998, a really good year uh, for gaming as it turns out. And you know, if you wanted to do gaming, one of the one of the best systems you could buy, money could buy at the time, was the Alienware, um, which is still around. It's owned by Dell, but it was you know its own its own computer company back then. And uh, the top of line system was in fact the Area 51. 
Uh, and this is a year earlier than that gateway. So it's the same speed, 400 megahertz, but a year earlier, you know, a year back in the 90s in, in terms of computing was quite a long time. Um, and uh, so you have the same speed processor, but a year earlier, uh, double the RAM, 128 megabytes, a 16 megabyte AGP, uh, two times the Voodoo 2. Uh, which would just blow my mind because the you know the Voodoo 2 card was considered pretty good. You got a couple of those. 11.5 uh, gigabyte hard drive and no monitors. So you actually see below there the price of the monitors. You'd start with a 17 inch for like 400 bucks. So you'd actually have to add 400 bucks or if you want to go with a 19 inch monitor, which most people didn't, but you know if you're spending this much anyway, maybe you should go ahead and do it. Uh, $700 uh, for a 19 inch monitor. So you'd actually have to tack on that to this $399.9 uh, price. Uh, but, but even if you, you know, happen to have a monitor around or whatever, and you're just spending the $4,000 in $2019, that's actually $6,137, which is crazy. You know, when you think about what you could potentially put together these days for $6,000, it is, um, absolutely top of the line. Pretty much everything um, in a gaming computer, or you know, even a, even a machine for, for work in terms of productivity, you get absolute top of the line. You know, Epic processor and you know probably a couple uh, 2080 Ti's uh, in there as well. And heck, out of curiosity, again, you know, I looked up Alienware, which is owned by Dell now, um, but just kind of seeing what anywhere near that amount of money would get you and it turns out six thousand dollars would get you yeah indeed a i9 9980xe 18 core uh processor so you know nearing the top of the line here um an rtx 2080 ti 11 gigabytes uh not dual though just a single card uh 32 gigabytes of ram uh 512 uh, gigabyte SSD not really that impressive in the hard drive space because uh, you're only tacking on two terabyte regular hard drive I would have expected more and you know if you were building this yourself you could for six thousand dollars I'm sure you could put in a dual um, RTX 2080 and probably more hard drive space so there's you know with Alienware there's gonna be a decent markup there that's what we're looking at all right Let's go back in time a little further. 1996, this uh, Compaq Presario 4122. And Compaq in the mid 90s was the dominant uh, brand of computers. You, know, you go to the store, you see Compaqs all over the place. You also see most likely uh, quite a few Packard Bells as well. It's kind of like a cheaper Compaq. Um, or uh, you might have seen some IBMs, um, which would be the more expensive uh, option. But this, uh, the Presari 4122 in 1996, you'd be looking at 150 megahertz. The original Pentium, maybe 16 gigabytes of RAM, uh, was still pretty standard. You could easily get 32, but it cost you a little more. Uh, no more AGP video cards. You're looking at two megabytes probably of a PCI card. Uh, 2.5 gigabyte hard drive and a 15 inch CRT monitor with this compact and that would set you back $2,800 um, which you know doesn't really sound that bad but again when you translate it to 2019 you're looking at over 4500 so again you know if you go out and spend $4,500 even on an off-shelf computer these days uh, you're gonna get you know an absolute beast in terms of a machine and the 4122 was again kind of a mid-range mostly a mid-range system affordable uh, system back then it's kind of hard to believe a $4,500 computer was considered affordable but I mean that's just the way that it was you know computers were, were still something that a lot of households didn't even own okay we've got this what looks like a yearbook photo of this uh, old Dell here from the early 90s it's 1992 now. Yeah, it's Dell 320SX. You know, no more multimedia, no more CD-ROM drives. You're rocking the five and a quarter inch floppy drives now. And uh, it's powered by 20 megahertz, 386 CPU. Uh, just fast enough, as, as I learned back in the day, to play SimCity, the, the original SimCity. And uh, not all that well either. It actually ran a little sluggish. 
Uh, two megabytes of RAM, uh, integrated VGA. So you did have VGA graphics, certainly a step up from you know CGA and EGA uh, graphics, but, but nothing, uh, certainly nothing special by modern standards. Um, 40 megabyte hard drive and a 14 inch uh, CRT monitor. You know, in the early 90s, um, the 40 megabyte hard drives were um, pretty much the standard, whether you got, you know, PC clone, um, IBM clone, I mean, or uh, an Apple computer. You know, you could store a couple high definition photographs on there. Uh, so $1,800, you know, Dell was actually among the more affordable, uh, you know, um, computer manufacturers and name brands at that time. It was actually one of the reasons they exploded that and uh, they offered um, basically purchasing through catalog and uh, online uh, earlier than a lot of other computer companies did. They took online orders and they, orders and they, they customized them, uh, which interests a lot of people in addition to being uh, really competitive in terms of price. So that'll only be $3,290 in 2019, which you know, again, is, is pretty competitive and pretty affordable and, and really does partly explain why Dell um, did so so well and by the end of the 90s was one of the, the major, uh, if not the top, uh, computer manufacturer. Okay, we're going back to 1987 and we've got this PS2 uh, computer by IBM, of course, the creators of the original personal computer in the in the 80s. Uh, IBM was always a little bit more expensive um, than the other computers, but they also tended to, to innovate new features like the PS2 that's named after the, the PS2 port, uh, introduced that. And uh, with this unit, you'd be looking at an eight megahertz, 8086 processor, uh, between 640 kilobytes and one megabyte of RAM. Uh, monochrome graphics, um, so you lost the color graphics here, uh, 20 megabyte hard drive, and uh, the 12 inch uh, monitor would come with it for this price of $2,295, and in you know, uh, 1987, that would be worth uh, $5,183. So we're getting up there in expense, and um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the, the IBMs tended to be more expensive, obviously, than, than the IBM clones. And is one of the, the major reasons why IBM kind of got left behind with uh, Tandy coming out with cheaper competitive units, you know, and all these other name brands, Compaq and Packard Bell. Uh, you know, they, they really undercut the price of IBM by, by quite a lot. And so they, they really weren't uh, terribly competitive by the, the 1990s in particular. Uh, what was the equivalent for Macintosh? Well, the Macintosh SE came out that same year in 1987 and had um, fairly equivalent specs. It sold uh, pretty well. Uh, it was one of the better selling Macintosh units and um, I believe this is what we had in grade school I and mean, these were very popular for schools you know they must have gotten some kind of educational discount or something like that because these these really weren't all that cheap um, even compared to IBM's they were a bit pricey so yeah you got uh, similar specs here an 8 megahertz processor 1 to 2 megabytes of RAM uh, monochrome graphics 20 megabyte hard drive yeah 9 inch integrated CRT monitor that would set you back $3,900, even in 1987. Uh, what would that be in 2019? $8,807. Wow. Yeah, I mean, Apple products have always been, you know, a little expensive uh, at that end of the spectrum, but um, yeah, you'd definitely be paying uh, a premium uh, for these, these Apple computers uh, back in the 80s. There were a lot of uh, cheaper options and uh, we'll touch on one here in a second but yeah I mean you're always been always been paying a premium seems like for for Apple products paying at least partly uh, for that name brand recognition and the fact that they were just kind of going their own way I mean you had you know PCs and you had Apple and Apple just kind of did its own thing just out of curiosity again here I went on uh, eBay 
and looked at, at the current prices for the uh, Macintosh SE, if you could uh, grab one of these off eBay. And uh, there was one that you could just buy now um, for a hundred bucks, basically $50 shipping, had a starting bid of just $50. So definitely not one of the you know more expensive vintage uh, Macintosh computers. There are some that sell for a lot more than that. But uh, definitely depreciated, you know, a little bit um, over time, uh, which kind of makes sense. I mean, they did make a lot of these and it did sell very well. So I'd imagine there's still quite a few of these uh, floating about out there. All right, something a bit more affordable, going back in time a bit more too, though, to 1982. And you've got the Commodore 64 released and uh yeah these were these were uh, absolutely targeted towards the home consumer market very affordable compared to you know uh, uh the the personal computer that ibm came out with in a year earlier and the offerings by apple and so forth um and you could get 16 color graphics out of this thing you know that would that was huge you're just gonna play some games on there and do some basic stuff. Having color graphics was uh, pretty amazing in, in 1982 uh, and ran on a one megahertz processor. 64 kilobytes of RAM, of course. Uh, Commodore 64 is named after that, the amount of RAM. Uh, no hard drive, no monitor. You know, you'd have to get your own uh, monitor for this and, and uh, floppy drive if you want that. So you'd have to go out and actually buy some peripheral uh, components if you want those but the base unit uh, very very affordable $595 in 1982 but of course in 1982 the 595 was worth uh, quite a bit more in fact it was about $1582 in 2019 dollars uh, which again is you know if, if you go out and spend $1500 on a computer you still be able to put together pretty respectable um, gaming computer uh, certainly would have been you know fifteen hundred dollars is quite a bit more than a gaming console out there today so maybe slightly on the pricey side but definitely you know much more competitive uh, in the broad home market than, than either Apple or IBM and their competitors and uh, Commodore 64 sold extremely well I think they sold like 15 million of these units and uh, continue to do well throughout the 80s had a really good market you know with the Amiga coming out later and um, yeah I mean very very solid performer in that uh, the more affordable um, you know home consumer market now the original uh, personal computer is uh, the IBM 5150 here uh, and 19 released in 1981 and uh, you know, being kind of the first of its of its kind, essentially, uh, it was fairly expensive. It wasn't really so much marketed towards the, the home consumer. It was, you know, mainly marketed towards uh, businesses. Uh, but, um, you know, you'd have a 4.77 megahertz uh, processor, which was uh, pretty good uh, in 1981 with 64 kilobytes of RAM. Uh, nothing too special with with the graphics, you know, monochrome graphics. At least initially, later it could be upgraded. You can put a you know CGA or an EGA card in that unit, and and also get a color monitor for it. Uh, no hard drive originally, just a couple five and a quarter inch floppies and your 12 inch monochrome CRT initially, and a really satisfying keyboard, uh, the Model F. Uh, keyboard has you know uh, by today's standards pretty weird layout. This is prior to the release of the Model M, which is the next generation IBM keyboard. And it's really the Model M that uh, set the standard for modern, modern uh, keyboard layouts, but still very, very satisfying uh, clicky mechanical uh, buckling spring keyboard. I actually prefer it to the, the Model M, to be honest. So, um, you know, this basic unit with the monitor, the keyboard and everything would set you back about $3,000. Again, you know, quite expensive, but you know, a lot of this was kind of paving the way for for uh, for personal computers. This was kind of the progenitor archetype of of the modern personal computer. And originality costs money. 
you know, uh, $8,467 uh, in 20, 2019 uh, dollars. Uh, so a bit, bit pricey. Um, you really have to save up for this one. And again, you know, it's easy to see why this was mainly uh, targeted toward uh, business enterprise initially. Now I go back a few years to 1977, the Apple II, uh, which is the follow-up to the original Apple that that um, that the company produced as as a kit essentially. So this was Apple II is actually, as far as I know, the first computer is all kind of put together for you. You could just you know buy the Apple II essentially the way it was. Maybe do some customization on it, but you could buy it as a full unit here with the disk drives and the monitor and all that. Uh, so the Apple II, uh, one to three megahertz, a little slower than the, than the IBM 5150, uh, four, four to 48 kilobytes of RAM, color graphics. So this was, I think, among the very first, uh, you know, uh, home computers with color graphics. Um, pretty revolutionary in that way. You know, Apple led the way in a number of different areas, um, and uh, the, the color graphics was definitely one of the earliest uh, in 1977. So no hard drive again, 12 inch CRT monitor, rocking that, that ba very basic color graphics. 2638, uh, $2,638 in 1977 is $11,168. Oh wow, yeah, that's, I mean, it's like buying, you know, really affordable car basically these days. So um, there's a reason why, it, you know, maybe it didn't sell as well as some of the early, uh, you know, console units and things like that. The, uh, the Commodore, uh, much, much more affordable. But, you know, in terms of its capability in 1977, it's really hard to surpass um, the, the Apple II. So it, it did come with that price premium. So if you go on eBay and you're trying to find yourself an Apple II these days, uh, you can pick one up uh, for less than $2,000. There really aren't that many out there. Uh, basically explains why, you know, they're, they're worth a little more uh, than say the Macintosh um, or Macintosh SE. Uh, because, you know, it's older and there's fewer units. You're going back to the late 70s. Um, Definitely not as rare or as expensive though, I can tell you, as the original Apple computer, which is uh, worth ten, uh, several tens of thousands of dollars now. But um, yeah, so basically, you know, to wrap things up, you'd be spending a lot more uh, back in the day on computers than, than today, but computers were still kind of a novel technology back then, and, and you didn't quite have that production scale that you have today that makes everything so much cheaper and uh, yeah it's kind of funny you can pick up a you know basically a, a, a Raspberry Pi uh, computer and you know it's more powerful than the computer systems that would cost you many thousands of dollars uh, just back in the 1990s so that's kind of kind of funny but that's the way technology works and how it how it keeps uh, moving forward so Hopefully you enjoyed this uh, latest trip down memory lane here and uh, please consider subscribing or just checking in later and uh, seeing what we've got in, in store. Uh, new videos coming out generally a couple of times a week. So uh, check back in with us and uh, see what's new.